Well, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for Tuesday, trading session the 30th of May 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Singler Signals and Market Updates from leading providers at Google Play and the Apple App Store, where it can be downloaded, or at www.tradesignal.com. In terms of the European markets now, given the fact that we've come off the uh, bank holiday uh, weekend on Monday from the American and the UK perspective, we certainly have the FTSE 100 certainly uh, opening lower. Okay, so yes, indeed, the FTSE 100 certainly gaps lower. Now, there's multiple reasons as to why the FTSE uh, itself has gapped lower now. Uh, well, the main one being the uh, the potential election overnight. Now, Mr. Corbyn, uh, out of the election, given the uh, summation on social media and the response from the uh, normal newspapers and media that I've been reading, is that uh, Miss May certainly looked very amateur uh, and uh, certainly looked uh, at unease, uh, looked dazed and confused, and really doesn't really have an understanding as, as to what's happening, hence the reason why she refuses to go to a head-to-head -head debate with uh, Mr. Corbyn because she'll probably get schooled. Now, she, she really does look like a clumsy uh, individual, uh, to say the least. I mean, she's had uh, almost 10 U-turns now on her dementia tax and national insurance and God knows anything what else. I mean, uh, she also claims that she's she's uh, certainly uh, stable, and that certainly isn't the case anymore. Now they're calling her weak and wobbly. So it looks like her uh, gap certainly has eroded. Uh, an individual with a 20-point gap who can't maintain a gap uh, certainly does say a lot in terms of uh, her leadership going forward. So certainly seems like the Conservative Party is in disarray, especially with their potential manifesto, uh, manifesto uh, re-launch. Um, uh, it certainly has failed thus far, and her arguments certainly are weaker as well. Whilst Mr Corbyn looks more of a, a stable individual, more calm and collective, especially when he was being interviewed by Parksman, and it's all obviously uh, following through in terms of positive sentiment towards Labour, and it certainly seems like it's closing the polls even further. So uh, the uh, polls certainly have come to a margin of error early, uh, with a six or seven point difference between the two. There's really nothing in between now, to be honest with you. And post the uh, debate last night, I think the uh, the audience or the UK citizens certainly will understand that as well. And you'll certainly see a lot of uh, votes being shifted, especially given the fact that the argument of taxing the um, of of certainly uh, abstaining and refraining from taxing 95%. Of taxpayers and only are aiming for that five percent obviously those that are much more wealthy and uh, have and also corporations that have been avoiding tax uh, certainly uh, especially a lot of tax avoidance schemes out there especially with Starbucks only paying a pound or two pound in tax and Amazon not paying anything either so it certainly seems like he's going for the uh, the more ethical route and uh, the more sensible route from my perspective anyway um, so uh, certainly start off from uh, taxing those individuals that have been voiding it, okay? And uh, then we'll take it from there, really, from my perspective. Uh, now, it's a trickle-down effect, and that obviously uh, increases the uh, spending in NHS, in education, okay? And that in and of itself uh, should actually uh, create jobs and sustain the recovery as well going forward, okay? So again, it's a message of hope and investing in the future versus... Uh, Miss May's uh, scare tactics and fear mongering, and that really isn't going to work. It's more of a uh, Mr. Trump style, uh, obviously, a diplomacy, and it really is weak and feeble and plays upon people's fears, okay, and prejudices, and so on and so forth. So it's not exactly very positive going forward for the UK, uh, and uh, especially given the fact that she's done that many U turns, uh, it doesn't look very promising in terms of her uh, negotiating a potential Brexit, and also given the fact that she's already stated that no deal is better than a good deal. Really, that's a stupid way of going into any negotiation, really. It's not about being macho. It's about being, uh, obviously, about negotiating. And it's about, obviously, coming to a, a mutual uh, uh, conclusion via a mutual respect. And that certainly isn't the case when you're already setting out the store, stating that, obviously, uh, no deal is better than a, uh, a bad deal. So, again, really amateur uh, and immature as well, too, from my perspective. Certainly looks very immature, and what's one of the one of the funniest things really is the fact that her own her own husband, Miss May, her own husband is a uh, a tax evasion expert, which really does sum up everything. Okay, uh, really is an oxymoron. And given the fact that she actually was a in the Remain camp, and now she uh, she certainly switched sides just for the sake of politics and uh, maintaining a uh, a steady income for herself. And God knows what her motives are, but really, uh, from my perspective, it really is hypocritical. I mean, number one. You, uh, you voted for Remain, at least Mr Cameron had the decency and respect 
to actually uh, step down, given the fact that his uh, his Remain campaign failed, and he certainly didn't want to uh, go ahead and uh, engage in politics in something that he didn't have uh, belief in himself. If you don't have belief in something, how can you campaign for something? So again, a lot of respect to Mr Cameron from that perspective, and that's one of the reasons why I actually voted Tory as well last year election. So I'll certainly go on record. I certainly vote. Uh, certainly voted Tory last uh, last election. So again, uh, and there's no bias from my perspective. I'm, I'm not a long, uh, uh, shall we say, a uh, long in the tooth uh, Tory supporter or a, a Labour uh, supporter. To be honest with you, it's about uh, uh, trading, and uh, from my perspective, it's about backing the uh, strongest horse and 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 the, and the horse that's going to obviously lead this country forward uh, in in terms of efficiency, prosperity education, healthcare, it's very, very important, especially like Mr. Clement Antley anyway. Okay, folks, so from that's my understanding in terms of uh, the election and uh, and given the fact that the polls certainly have narrowed and therefore it creates that political uncertainty, okay, given the fact that you no longer have uh, a, a priced in, a factored in uh, a conservative uh, victory, now the, uh, the margin for error is so small it could go either way, okay? So political uncertainty is negative for stock markets, hence the reason why the bias remains bearish. Now the other two factors as well that are weighing on the markets this morning as well are the Italian election potentially being pushed forward and the uncertainty there. Also with regards to many Italian banks and the recapitalization phase as well. Okay, so consumers, French consumer spending also fell this morning, although GDP and uh, consumer confidence certainly rose. But the uh, consumer spending uh, aspect certainly uh, fell. Asian markets were subdued overnight, more or less flat. Uh, certainly not moving higher. North Korea cons concerns as well. Uh, North Korea concerns, markets certainly focusing on those. Uh, North Korean concerns certainly remain at the forefront. Okay. North Korean concerns remain at the forefront with regards to the weekend. Uh, and obviously, given the fact that uh, US markets and uh, UK markets are now open, given the bank holiday weekend, they will have the ability to factor that potential fear into the market. OK, other than that, uh, we have um, uh, EU data just out now, certainly came in on the weaker side uh, and also talks of Greece missing a potential payment uh, and again, potentially walking away uh, again, has sent fears into the eurozone. Also, with regards to the IMF as well. Uh, and the uh, uncertainty going forward. So more of a, um, a European uh, fear certainly re-emerging, uh, going back to the forefront, and that certainly remains a theme this morning. Okay, let's look at the actual technical picture now. Let's see exactly where we are technically speaking. German DAX at present on the daily chart, certainly trading sideways to potentially weaker. Bear in mind you do have that on-fill gap at 12,000, given the fact that we have this fear now. Also, Mr. Draghi's speech yesterday was certainly one of a, a dovish, uh, one of a dovish nature. But again, like I said, the market itself is certainly concerned with regards to number one, Greece, number two, Italy, and number three, obviously the UK and the Brexit negotiations going forward. So, from my perspective, certainly a lot of variables here forcing the equity market lower. German DAX has support around the twelve five forty level, and if that breaks, and you're looking at twelve four ninety. So from my perspective, certainly watch out below. We certainly are oscillating uh, between the two. So you're oscillating between that upper bound, which is seen around the 12,650, 12,640, and then obviously the lower bound, which is seen at uh, 12,590 and 12,570, with potential support being at 12,540. So we'll see how the uh, European markets react. Keep observing, okay? Let's move on to the French CAC now. Let's see exactly where the French CAC is. OK, the French CAC certainly has been helped from a stronger GDP and stronger consumer confidence, but consumer spending is down. And that really is the probably one of the most important variables. Adding the fact, obviously, we have concerns with regards to Greece and Italy now as well. Eurozone back in the spotlight and the equity market certainly will be weak. 60 minute chart just about held on to the support at 5280. <clears throat> if that were to crack, then you do have uh, support below at 5240. So keep an eye on that. You do have the unfilled gap as well above. So again, that certainly needs to be something that uh, needs to be paid attention to in terms of the French CAC. Looking at the 10 minute chart, <clears throat> double top for now on the French CAC at uh, 5307. <clears throat> you have an unfilled gap below at 5330. 
okay uh, if we do flush lower like I said you are looking at support uh, at around this region here at 5230 if we crack lower then you are looking at closing that gap at 5060 so certainly um, make yourself available uh, or make, so make yourself aware of that potential gap below now we do have a HNS formation brewing on the FTSE 100 daily chart certainly has held resistance on this diagonal trend line therefore bias remains weak 60 minute chart has a bear flag formation and a HNS formation now you are looking for the HNS target to be complete at 57450 so again look for a flush on European equities looking for risk aversion to kick in okay in terms of euro stocks last but not least again still trading sideways showing weakness 10 minute chart certainly has bounced off double bottom support at 3540 but the uh, the actual rally itself certainly will find resistance at 3578 and uh, obviously at the 200 ma as well previous support equals resistance for now on the euro stocks okay so certainly will be capped at this 3580 zone and we are looking to potentially move lower so bias remains bearish folks that's my summation okay uh, please be sure to visit trade signal signals and market updates from leading providers and certainly take advantage of the bonus via cfdes.com goodbye now